Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Active Directory, Enumeration and Visualization with Bloodhound, right? So uh, for those of you who have been asking you know, me to actually make or cover how to utilize Bloodhound and how it can be utilized to visualize uh, you know, information pertinent to or regarding a particular Active Directory domain, then this video is for you. So we are going to be utilizing the Try Hack Me Room uh, Post Exploitation Basics, which is a free room, so you guys can actually join in. Now we've already taken a look at how to perform manual enumeration, manual local enumeration, and then enumeration with Power View, which we did in the previous video. And what we are going to be doing essentially within this task, as you can see, enumeration with Bloodhound, is automating all that we did within the Power View video using the sharp the sharp hound uh, tool or powershell script which is the data collection tool for bloodhound and then importing that data into bloodhound so that we can uh, graphically view it uh, and again the way bloodhound uh, essentially uh, represents data is in the form of a graph right so if we take a look at the bloodhound github repository here we can see that it gives us a good description there of the tool it bloodhound as you can see here uses graph theory to reveal hidden and often unintended relationships within an active directory environment, right? So attackers can use Bloodhound to easily identify highly complex attack paths that would otherwise be impossible to quickly identify. So what's going on here is if you remember in the previous video when we, we utilized PowerView and we performed all the enumeration manually using various commands, we were able to gather quite, uh, quite a bit of good information or relevant information that can be utilized to stage further attacks. So you know we discovered the um, we discovered other computers on the domain. We discovered the local admins, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right now, the the problem with all of this is that all of that information, and there is a lot of information when it comes down to Active Directory, uh, all of this information really doesn't make sense uh, if you take a look at it on a terminal. So uh, this is where Bloodhound comes into play. So what it does is it essentially allows you to visualize all the data that you've gathered in an easy to understand way in order to identify highly complex attack paths that would other, otherwise be impossible to quickly identify, right? So it gives you a better idea of what you're dealing with in terms of the domain that you're currently attacking. Now, uh, when we talk about Sharphound, because there's a lot of confusion around this, Bloodhound is the visualization tool. Sharphound is actually the official data collector tool for Bloodhound, right? So it's written in C Sharp and utilizes native Windows API functions and LDAP or LDAP namespace functions to collect data from domain controllers and domain joined Windows systems. So again, this PowerShell script essentially automates what we did with PowerView. That being said, as you can see here, uh, Sharpound will essentially perform all the enum enumeration automatically really quickly unless you specify otherwise. And then of course, it outputs all of this data into JSON files that can then be imported into Bloodhound. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, install Bloodhound on our Kali VM or your attacker VM, whatever pen testing distribution you're using. Uh, once that is done, we then need to start up the Neo4j console. And uh, the reason we're using Neo4j, as you can see, it actually explains that here. Um, if I can actually find that description here. Uh, well, I actually cannot, but you can see there we are. It actually explains this here. So it's built on top of uh, Linkurious, compiled with Electron, with a Neo4j database fed by a C Sharp data collector. So we need Neo4j, and the um, Bloodhound package already exists within the Kali repo. So we can is install it really simply by, of course, uh, copying this command or typing it in manually. So I'll just do that right now. So I'll say sudo, and um, I'll paste that in there. And uh, I already have Bloodhound installed, so that shouldn't uh, prompt me to do anything or install Neo4j. Once that is done, uh, we then need to start the Neo4j console. And the default credentials that you can use to authenticate with are Neo4j and Neo4j for the username and the password. So uh, we can say that here. So I'm going to say uh, Neo4j. Um, and then, of course, uh, one second, let me just make sure that, that is correct. Yeah. All right. So um, Neo4j console. There we go. And it's going to start it up. If it gives you this error, you need to uh, provide it with root or sudo privileges, which I'll do there. And it's going to start the Neo4j console. So just give that a few seconds. And it's going to tell you that uh, the remote interface is available on the following address. So again, I can just copy that address and then open it up here in my browser, which I'll do right now. 
and uh, you can see that uh, during your first um, your first uh, actual uh, you know login or interaction with the Neo 4J console, uh, you'll be prompted to log in and change your password. In my case, we're logging in using the default uh, port here. The authentication type is username and password. The username is Neo 4J. And the password that you'll need to provide is Neo4j. But in my case, I've already changed my password. So I'll hit connect. And in, so in my case, you can see it's telling me that I have an error here. So again, let me just try that one more time. So I'll hit connect. It's still giving me the error there. The database is provided. Uh, Neo4j there. Um, let me just try that again. And uh, authenticate with my password. There we are. So once you log in with the default credentials, you'll be prompted to change uh, the default Neo4j credentials and provide a new password. Once that is done, you can then start up Bloodhound. So that's what I'm going to do next. So let's just head over here. Uh, we can start up Bloodhound. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm just going to open this up in a new terminal. So uh, just give me a second here. And uh, there we are. Open up a new tab. And uh, we can then just say Bloodhound. Um, and that will start up the Bloodhound interface. So there we are. That's going to start up Bloodhound. You then need to provide your Neo4j username and password. So in my case, it is Neo4j. That's the username. And then the password, which I've already done, is the following. So I'll just type that in and hit enter and log in. There we are. So it's going to log you into um, Bloodhound. And we don't have any data here, so it's not going to bring up any graph. So that's the next step. We need to actually generate all of this information or data. All right, so let's actually head over to the target system. So I'll just go back into my browser here and um, we can then log into the target via SSH. So I'm just going to copy the address there. And uh, we then need to, of course, uh, bypass the PowerShell execution policy and then uh, launch or execute the Sharphound PowerShell script. And then we can invoke Bloodhound. So I'll just open up my terminal here and uh, I'll just increase the font size. So we'll say SSH uh, administrator and uh, we'll paste in the IP there. And um, again, I have to copy the password, which I have stored here. So we'll just copy that there. I'll say yes. And that's going to add it to my list of known hosts. Log in. And there we are. So if we now head over into the downloads directory, um, we should have the sharp pound PowerShell script. There we are. So we can firstly, of course, um, we can say PowerShell uh, EP bypass right and then we hit enter bypass the execution policy uh, wait up for powershell there and then of course we can execute the bloodhound oh sorry the sharphound powershell script so sharphound um, which i'll just type in there sharphound.ps1 hit enter and we can now begin the enumeration process now when it comes down to Sharphound and the type of data that you can collect, as you can see, Sharphound will automatically determine what your current domain uh, or, you know, what domain your current user belongs to, find a domain controller for that domain and start the default collection method. The default collection method uh, will collect the following pieces of information from the domain controller, right? So security group memberships, domain trusts, uh, group policy links, uh, SQL admin links, etc. And uh, you can go through this documentation. It will be linked in the description section. And further, uh, furthermore, if we click on the, on the Sharphound flags here, uh, you can see that if we click on enumeration options, uh, we are going to be utilizing the, um, the collection method. If we take a look at co collection method, you can see we're utilizing the all option, which will perform all collection methods except for GPO local group, right? So you can utilize any of the following local uh, or collection methods uh, based on what information you're trying to gather. But in our case, because uh, we want to get or we want to visualize all information, we're going to utilize the all collection method flag. All right, so if we go back to the try hack me room here, uh, you can see we need to type in invoke bloodhound collection method, all domain controller. Uh, the domain is controller.local, which we were able to identify previously, and then output it into a zip. Um, zip file name there. So we're just going to do that right now. So I'll just co copy this instead of typing it in manually. And uh, I'll paste that in there. As you can see, invoke bloodhound collection method all domain controller.local zip file name is loot.zip. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to begin the enumeration process. And there we are. It's going to tell us that that is done. It compresses all the data into the following file. So 
uh, it will prefix the loot file with the date uh, when this scan was actually uh, performed and of course then loot.zip right so you can upload this file directly to the user interface which means our Kali VM or whatever system is running uh, Bloodhound actually so Sharphound enumeration completed happy graphing and then of course um, if let me just clear out my terminal here there we go so if we list out the contents of this directory you can see we have the we have the loot.zip file so what we need to do now to transfer it over to our Kali VM is uh, utilize uh, PSCP because we're dealing with Windows um, or you can utilize SCP although I haven't tried it out so uh, let's actually do that right now so in order to transfer it over to the target and uh, you know what I'll just do this in a new tab so you guys can actually see what's going on um, what we need to do is say PSCP and uh, PSCP is part of the putty tools package which you can install by saying sudo apt get install and then of course putty tools I believe is the name of the package uh, yeah that is correct I believe I already have it installed there we are so we can say PSCP and then provide the uh, the source where we're getting the file from and we then need to specify the destination right so uh, we're utilizing SSH for our protocol here so um, we're going to say administrator at and then we copy the IP address which I'll just do right now and then we paste that in there and then we need to provide the actual target directory or the directory that contains uh, the loot file that we want to actually download onto the Kali VM now that is going to be under our downloads directory so we can specify the absolute path well we actually need to specify the absolute path which is going to be uh, users and then of course administrator uh, and then downloads and then we need to get the file name or the loot file name here which of course you can rename but in this case let's just copy it over anyway and I will copy it over to documents uh, try hack me post exploitation and we'll copy it over there it's going to ask us for the password which I'll just copy there uh, do I want to store the key in cache yes and uh, paste in the password there uh, there we are the file is downloaded so I can now head over into the folder that I actually saved this in which was under try hack me and post exploitation and we have the file there we'll actually have two of them so I'm just going to remove um, one of them here uh, so we'll just say loot um, I can actually find that here um, 50900 loot.zip and there we are right so we have the zip file here and uh, we can now import this into bloodhound so importing this into bloodhound is fairly simple we open up bloodhound and then you want to click on this little download option here which says import graph and uh, we can then download it so i'm going to go into documents and then of course we're going to try hack me um and for some reason i can actually find that here which is weird i should actually have that uh there we are it should be in a try hack me post exploitation loot dot zip import that it's going to say bad json file uh so we can upload the data sorry that is my bad there we are so it's going to upload the loot for us and it's going to give you a uh, you know upload progress or status for all the files all the json files as you can see you have your groups users domains gpos uh ous um or ou or use uh computers.json we can clear the finished and that is that so we've imported the data uh, now when it comes down to actually uh, visualizing data there's multiple ways we can go about doing that so we can you know specify the target node there uh, or we can head over into the analysis here and then uh, use, use the pre-built an uh, an analytics queries which um, allow us to do various things number one we can find all the domain admins so if we click on that you can see it's going to find all domain admins so uh, this is the controller which is uh, of course controller.local and then these are all the domain admins so you can see it's much easier to actually understand what's going on so the sql service is a uh, domain admin uh, admin 2 is a domain admin and then ad administrator which we already know is a domain admin if we click on a particular admin in this case or a uh, user for that matter you can see that uh, if we take a look at the node properties here it will provide us with the object id uh, and if we click on maybe administrator you can see that's your sid there and that of course tells us that this is the administrator user it provides us with a description the admin count essentially all the information we were able to enumerate with power view 
is is displayed here in a way that's uh, uh, that's much simpler to understand, right? So if we go back to the analysis here, you can see we can also utilize uh, the other analytic queries. Uh, so for example, um, shortest path to domain admins, we specify the uh, domain admin group, and then this will display the shortest path as it says here. And uh, let me just minimize that the shortest path. And uh, you can see there we are shortest path to the domain admins, right? So uh, the shortest path appears to be through, um, as you can see here, the disabled Windows Defender. And these, of course, are group policy links. And uh, this will really not make sense until you've actually um, understood how Active Directory works. So for now, I'm just taking you through the process of how to utilize Bloodhound and Sharphound. Uh, and of course, you can see that these uh, controller.local contains the following SQL service and of course, admin uh, to at controller.local. And then this is the controller here, right? So you can also uh, pivot that and you also have your raw query. So you can enter a cipher qu uh, query. And uh, if you want to essentially limit or filter out results. Um, now, now that we've done that, there is one more thing that I wanted to show you here. And that is under the database information. Well, this is uh, this particular tab is uh, related to the uh, Bloodhound database. So you have the ability to refresh the database stats. You can clear the sessions and clear the database once you're done with a particular. Uh, you, once you once you're done with the information from a particular domain, you can always clear it out, which is always recommended. And then, of course, if I specify a node like the controller here, um, you can see it provides you with all the relative information. And uh, for example, the execution rights, outbound control rights, um, etc. If we go back into analysis, a few other analytic queries that we can utilize are, for example, find computers where domain users are local admin. I don't think we'll find any. There we are. So it's going to say no data returned from query. As I said, we're not really working within a properly configured Active Directory environment. So this will really not display anything important. Uh, find servers where domain users can RDP. Will that display anything? Nothing there. Um, we can also check for the domain trusts, so we can map them. Again, nothing there. Shortest path to unconstrained delegation systems. Uh, there we are. Again, I'll not be explaining this right now because uh, you, you're not familiar with, um, again, delegation systems. Um, so if we take a look at the Try Hack Me challenges here associated with this particular task, as you can see, we've pretty much done all of that, logged in imported the uh, JSON files. And now um, if we click on, uh, as you can see, there are plenty of queries to choose uh, from and enumerate connections inside the network. Uh, it's going to ask us what service is also a domain admin. So if we head over into Bloodhound, we can find all domain admins. Uh, we're looking for service accounts. So if we click on, we have SQL service, which is one admin two and administrator. So the only service is SQL service. So let's actually see whether that is correct. So SQL uh, service, submit. There we are, that is correct. What two users are Kerberostable? Uh, if we go back to Bloodhound and we look for the Kerberostable accounts, there we are. So we have SQL service and KR, um, KRB TGT, right? So let's actually type that in. So SQL service and uh, KRB TGT, so KRB, TGT, and we hit submit. And that is correct, right? So that is essentially done. So uh, when, when, whenever I get questions regarding Bloodhound and, uh, um, you know, essentially collecting information from an Active Directory domain, um, you know, not a lot of people understand exactly how this works. And uh, furthermore, I haven't covered, uh, you know, the entire process of utilizing Sharpound because a lot of it will come into context when we have a real Active Directory environment, right? And I'll be, as I said, uh, showing you how to set up your own Active Directory lab, uh, if that's something you guys are interested in, so that we can actually go through this all together. Uh, but Bloodhound and Sharphound uh, all together are red team tools primarily, or, although as a penetration tester, you should be familiar with how to utilize them. And the documentation really is very, very useful. Um, so again, within Bloodhound, you can utilize any of the pre-built analytics queries, or you can create your own custom queries here if you want. Um, if we, uh, again, take a look at some of the settings. So for example, I can refresh that. And uh, if we take a look at uh, change the layout type, you can see that that's just going to change it a little bit. Under settings, 
Uh, this essentially deals with the nodes themselves and you can also switch this to dark mode which is easier on my eyes and much better in terms of um, you know viewing right so we go back into analysis let's see what other data we can gather so tortoise path to high value targets that's the domain controller there we are so you can see this is quite a complex um, graph here and uh, in many ways you can actually drag and drop information or essentially drag it as far as possible and reorganize this uh, but we'll be getting into all of these links uh, because Active Directory can be quite cumbersome to understand especially when I show you something like this so uh, that's going to be it for this video in the next video we'll actually get started or you know start taking a look at how to utilize Mimikatz and how we can dump hashes as well as passwords from memory with Mimikatz uh, one more question before I actually end this video. I've been getting a lot of comments under the previous videos uh, regarding antivirus evasion, right? Now, antiviruses uh, typically will utilize signature-based detection, right? And without a doubt, they are signatures for PowerView and Bloodhound or Sharphound, if you will. And uh, that's obviously going to cause a problem if Windows Defender is uh, enabled. And this is where the whole concept of... Um, off-disk or uh, in-memory execution of certain utilities like Bloodhound comes into play and that can be that can be easily done if you're working with a command and control center uh, where all the commands are executed in memory and nothing is stored on disk again I'm getting too into it right now but we'll also be taking a look at command and control centers very very soon as I said we have a really exciting videos coming up and we'll talk about antivirus evasion and the differences between, uh, you know, evading on disk and in memory and why a lot of, you know, complex attacks are all done in memory because you never ever want to store files on disk. For this, in this case, all I'm doing is just explaining the process of utilizing these tools. We'll get to antivirus uh, evasion and also intrusion detection system evasion in the future. That being said, let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear your feedback, any questions you have. Uh, you know, post them in the comment section. If you want to contact me personally, you can do so on Twitter or you can join in on our Discord server. The link is in the description. We have really great conversations on there. So I'll be happy to see you there and answer your questions. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.